What's going on, everybody? This is Pastor Sean coming to you live with another episode of Death Church Radio, Death Church Radio Podcast, and also the Sean C. Stuckey Show on Facebook. All right, so for today's video, I'm going to be going over the former New Age practitioner exposes aliens, demons, uh, spiritism, and the occult. So uh, this one's going to be a pretty entertaining episode. I'm going to be giving you my two cents. We're going to be watching the video together, and then I'm going to chime in. Looking at my phone, and I got a text message from one of my friends that sends me amazing testimonies every once in a while. And I received this link to the uh, 700 Club, and it was this guy by the name of Steve Bancar. And um, it was talking about his exit out of the New Age movement. And I am very interested in the New Age movement and anything that has to do with the occult. Because I believe 100% it's having a huge influence on culture, whether we see it or not. As I tour public high schools and middle schools, I talk to students. And as you start talking to me, you start realizing that there's more people into the Ouija board than you think. Because that is 100% correct. And what you're going to be hearing from the guy who is doing the testimony in this video is that it can come from multiple sources. So Ouija boards, that being the biggest one, either if it's a makeshift one that you can make yourself or whatever Hasbro one you can buy on Amazon or eBay, it can come through Harry Potter, whatever books, movies, DVDs, CDs, anything that would open up a doorway or a portal uh, in the spiritual realm. Because there was a movie that came out, Ouija, uh, about a year ago, and there was this huge uh, movement of the Ouija board coming back with kids experimenting, and then you start talking to kids, and they're into angel cards and tarot cards, and then you're watching movies of the supernatural and paranormal activities and Harry Potter, and as you start digging into these movies, you see the occult, how it's penetrating the culture. Yeah, so and this is Ray, um, and I just had a story um, in my family that is similar to um, what they were talking about when something embodies spiritual presence. Um, and so I had an aunt who, um, when I was younger, we were all living in Riverside, California, and she purchased a home. Um, and prior to her and her family purchasing the home, there had been satanic ritual done in the home. Um, there was a pentagraph that was on the wall that they just kind of painted over. And my family um, is Christian and, and they're still believers. And so they prayed over the home and um, anointed it. And, and there was nothing particular that they kind of uh, felt as far as presence um, at the time. But then they started uh, feeling weird presence because they had a child and in the baby's room, um, there was different things like movies and a lot of Disney stuff and what started happening is my little cousin would start to wake up at night crying and having these tantrums and um, they couldn't figure out what was going on but it was almost um, my aunt says that it was like she was being bothered or harassed um, by something and there was like this anger uh, of being hurt or um, bothered you know so what my aunt did one night she got uh, this discernment about the things that were in her home what could it be so after praying um, she decided to throw out a bunch of Disney movies and particularly she kept recalling in her mind in the Aladdin movie when Jafar becomes the genie and he becomes this gigantic um, satanic version of a good genie um, and he's this red big being who's just full of wickedness and so after she threw away all the the movies that could potentially have these demonic um, characters in it or um, spiritual or supernatural things uh, that took place in it she decided to just throw them all out and uh, her and her husband prayed over the home and that was the end of the tantrums it was a really um, freakish thing a supernatural but just kind of something to remember that the victory, yes, is won, but the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he uh, will use any means to do it. He's deceiving, and he's wicked, and um, he will pry himself into everything that we own, you know, in little things like movies or what we listen to. Um, he's trying to devour us um, mentally, and, and the world is that we live in is more spiritual than we actually give it credit for daily and so just 
being aware of that and being aware of the things that we feed our minds and feed our hearts. I often excuse myself um, to, to think that it's okay to watch these things because there's an absence of God that I can point out. Like if I'm watching something about aliens, because I'm really interested in it, that it's demonic and to actually learn about this demonic thing. So it's just something that you have to be careful with, I think, um, in inviting spiritual warfare into these places that potentially could be gateways or doors. Of this guy, Steve, my guest today, it was his exit on coming out of New Age. So, Steve, thank you for Stephen. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So we have a lot to talk about. We do, and I want you to unload. So I'm <laughs> okay. going to talk less. Okay. Um, but let's get into it. Why don't you give me a little overview of where you grew up and how you even got introduced to the New Age movement? Yeah. Um, born and raised in a Christian household, like a lot of people. Really. One of the biggest misconceptions that you're going to hear from a lot of people that proclaim to be Christian or even spiritual or anything like that is that, well, I go to church. I go to church with my family like once a week or twice a week or even just going on Christmas or whatever. And I can pretty much do whatever I want inside my own home. And that still is considered being saved when that is a huge misconception. So when someone says, well, I'm a spiritual person and I'm proclaimed to be Christian, that nothing like that is gonna happen to me in the spiritual realm, that my house is not gonna get possessed or anything like that and become haunted. Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, like a radically Christian household. <laughs> okay. Um, homeschooled under a Christian curriculum, uh, in and out of Christian private school. I uh, didn't even hit the public school system till grade seven. Um, so, you know, I knew all the Bible stories growing up and at a church my whole life. Um, I actually was really, uh, passionate about young earth apologetics for some reason in grade nine, um, evidence for intelligent design, ev evidence for a young earth, evidence against Darwinian evolution and so forth. I was researching this stuff a lot in grade nine and grade 10. Um, when I really started to, and I didn't really identify as a Christian at that time, um, if you, if you laid out, you know, uh, the set of beliefs of the Christian faith, I would have said, yeah, I probably consent to those. But I didn't have a, a personal, I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I wasn't born again. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, did you just catch that? Did you catch what he said right there? He said that he was in the knowledge of these things, or supposedly, quote unquote, in the knowledge of things of God, but he did not have the Holy Spirit within him. He was at the time not a part of God's fold. It's not even the attitude of your heart that makes you change. If you look at John chapter 6 verse 44, it states, no one can come to me unless the Father who has sent draws to him and I will raise him up on the last day. So you can be in the knowledge as much as you want on different biblical subjects, theologies, and then mix that in with that new age crap or whatever. It doesn't justify you being saved. Um, so I was basically just a, a walking target for the enemy. And what changed everything for me was uh, I was watching a program on the History Channel uh, at the time. It's called Ancient Aliens. Yes, I and know it. yeah, it's become kind of a meme, you know, mm -hmm. the guy with the crazy, wacky hair and a few other characters on there who are pretty funny. But uh, it basically puts forward the. Most of everything that has gone over in that show, Ancient Aliens, is alleged information. And also I wanted to throw out there about his new age ism, but also mixing it with the Bible and Christianity, like what the Romans used to do, you know, during Santernia. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. That's in first Corinthians chapter 12, verse three. The idea that all of these ancient cultures in the past, like the Egyptians, like the Sumerians, like the Babylons, like the Mayans, that what they were trying to describe in their stories, what they're trying to describe in their hieroglyphs, when they talk about, you know, gods and these supernatural um, beings coming down from the sky, what they're really describing is flesh and blood alien encounters. And they'll show pictures and depictions in these ancient cultures that appear to be spacecrafts or UFOs or alien looking beings. And their theory is that, okay, well, maybe we're not alone in uh in the universe maybe it's actually teeming with life and maybe their you know this culture is a billion or two billion years more advanced in terms of their evolution 
and they know how to travel uh, through, you know, just through light years. So I just want to talk a little bit about practical things as a Christian or a believer and how we maneuver these things in the spiritual realm. Um, and when I said earlier uh, to be mindful of what we're watching and what we're listening, I'm not saying it in a legalistic way, but I do think that we should be mindful of everything that we do um, in the spiritual um, and I'm not trying to condemn anyone, but at the same time, I feel as Christians, we should be aware of the presence of the Lord always. Um, and that's what makes us sinner, right? Because we don't always do that, but just being mindful of that as we, um, become more aware of spiritual. I want to talk a little bit about how we, um, how we steer clear of these things or how we protect ourselves against. Uh, evil or wickedness or these these presence um, of the of demonic um, presences or or the devil um, and I just kind of want to look at how Jesus did it and Jesus himself we see in the gospels often rebukes them like he is the authority over them and he is Lord and oftentimes they would um, come out or or whatever they were commanded they would do and they would say oh it is the Lord uh, so demons know who Christ is and they are fearful of who he is um, and so in James 4 7 it says submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you so one thing about the the, the presence of the spiritual world is as we submit to God and resist the devil when there's temptations this is kind of referring to temptations but even um, in entertainment and things um, where there might be evil presence he, and it says and he will flee from you so when we are submitting to God Satan knows who the king is he knows who the master is and he has to leave um, and so that is one thing that um, I kind of found to be helpful and another place where it kind of talks about something similar is in Ephesians 10 or Ephesians 6 excuse me verses 10 through 12 it says finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil for we do not wrestle with flesh and blood but against the rulers and against the authorities against the cosmic powers over this present darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places so just another place where it says be strong in the Lord and that is your protection and that is the place uh, where we have power in the Lord not in our own um, a lot of times we grew up a lot of us grew up saying I rebuke you in the name of the Lord but I have no power over <laughs> demons uh, the Lord has power over demons and again we see that in the gospels when Jesus says you are rebuked come out he is the authority over those things so being mindful that we are in him um, and allowing him to have authority over things as we pour in um, as we open up to the God then he is able to have um, authority over things and and that's through the Holy Spirit and through faith and uh, through prayer and through reading of scripture and being closer and closer to the Lord I um, mean knowing him and knowing his authority and knowing his holiness and his abilities this is right thanks in order to get to us and what we're seeing all these ancient religions the reason they started is it's just ancient man trying to with his primitive mind understand these alien visitations that he's having and that to me was um, at the time when I heard that 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 seemed to be incompatible with Genesis you know it seemed mm -hmm. to be incompatible yep. with six-day yep. creationism because yep. I didn't see anywhere where does it say God created the aliens. I didn't see anywhere where, um, uh, you know, if the Bible says that no man comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. And, you know, um, Paul says uh, one thing can be said with certainty that Christ came to, to die for sinners. Does that mean that for the tens of millions of planets that have intelligent life on them, did Christ have to go and die an atoning death tens of thousands of times over for each alien planet. All an alien is is just a flesh and blood demon. This itself is a fallacy and there is no evidence or reason suggesting that Jesus had died 
for any other life form other than humans here on earth it's just us we are made in his creation and when he is drawing his people to him it's just us it's just the humans that were predestined to already be a part of his children which is in the book of john chapter 3 all right so ladies and gentlemen that was just part one of four in this new series that i'm making the third eye saved aka the stephen bancar's testimony Thank you guys for listening and God bless.